mass spectrometers, you know, where you oh. uh, send a charged particle through a magnetic field and it, it uh, drops the particle according to its mass uh, in a curved path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a paper years ago by um, uh, Tommy Gold, who's another maverick scientist who I enjoy because uh, he <laughs> wasn't afraid to... Uh, uh, call a spade a spade instead of a, a perfect uh, agricultural implement. <laughs> and uh, he uh, pointed out one of the problems on the moon with the cratering. He said they tend to occur in pairs mm -hmm. or at least uh, in groups. And he said, this can't be, this doesn't, doesn't match uh, simple impacts. And it doesn't. But it does match lightning uh, impacts because uh, you tend to get one bolt which carves a crater and then a subsidiary bolt or a um, stroke, if you like, uh, which then attaches itself to the highest point, which is the rim of the crater. So on the moon and other cratered bodies, you will see large craters with a lot of small craters dotted on the rim. <laughs> but you never see the opposite. You don't see the large crater cutting through the small crater. It's always the small crater cutting through the large, which is diagnostic of an electrical discharge, not an impact by a comet or a meteorite or anything else. See, the, these, no. are, these observations are... are are incredible and they they make more sense you know <laughs> well that's what people keep saying to me <laughs> yeah absolutely that's, that's it's fascinating and one thing as well if, while we're on the topic of, of lightning as well uh you mentioned before also this the upward e effect of of lightning we have uh yes. sprites i think they're referred to as uh that's a, right. another type of lightning here on earth T tell us about that yes it's part of the circuit between the earth and the sun um the lightning is generally regarded by uh, meteorologists and um, geologists and so on as being part of a closed circuit between uh, storms in the Earth's atmosphere, the ionosphere, and uh, and then back down to Earth. <clears throat> but the electric universe says no, everything is connected uh, and connected electrically in the solar system. Mm. So the uh, charge difference between the Earth and the uh, solar wind, the sun's environment, has to be accommodated by discharges between the earth and clouds. Clouds act as an intermediary between the earth and the ionosphere and um, the ionosphere and space. And this is exactly what's been found and has puzzled the uh, people who have discovered it. In fact, uh, the ill-fated Columbia satellite, uh, sorry, uh, shuttle mission was uh, one of its main uh, efforts was to photograph um, the uh, discharges into space. And those discharges are powerful enough to create gamma rays, which has also been another surprise for um, the traditional view. But, but it all makes sense in an electrical way because uh, our weather systems are driven, in my opinion, uh, largely by electric currents. Because if you go to the outermost planets in the solar system, they have the most violent winds in the solar system. Uh -huh. oh. And Neptune and that, you have over a thousand uh, mile an hour winds. And uh, the question is, okay, well, the only place you could get uh, the energy to do that might be from inside the planet, but that doesn't match the, uh, the way the atmosphere behaves. In fact, one expert, who, when he looked at Venus, uh, said, uh, if we don't understand what's going on in Venus, and, and that's the case at present, uh, how can we say we understand the Earth's atmosphere? Yeah. And the answer, the answer is we don't. We don't, exactly. Uh, the big storms on Earth and the trade winds and so on are driven uh, largely electrically. So the uh, wild weather and so on that we might receive at times can be put down more to external influences other than uh, solar radiation and, uh, and man's efforts to uh, mess up the environment. So what does this say uh, to you in terms of the current discussion of uh, anthropogenic global warming and things like this? The thing that we have to get used to, <clears throat> and it may be a little difficult, is that the sun, like all stars, is a variable star. It's dependent upon its environment. It, uh, it does not have an internal engine, so uh, we rely on the galaxy to provide us with a steady power supply to the sun. Mm. The Earth participates uh, in that circuit. Uh, the sun has a, a, a mechanism in that um, photosphere, which is quite remarkable when you think about it. It acts a bit like a transistor. 
which smooths out the um, effect of changes in the voltage of the sun's environment. So in other words, you get fairly steady uh, heat and light from the photosphere even while the uh, power is changing. Now, you can tell the power is changing on the sun because uh, above the photosphere is where all the action takes place and you get x-rays and uh, ultraviolet light. And in, uh, in x-rays, the sun goes dark for part of the, uh, living, uh, yeah, the uh, solar cycle. Mm -hmm. So the sun is a variable star and uh, people haven't got their heads around that yet. And it is the... It and the electrical supply to the sun is the major input to the earth and its weather and its climate. So um, <clears throat> what we do on earth really doesn't matter to any great degree at all as far as the climate is concerned. Hmm. I mean, it is it is an admirable thing to clean up the environment instead sure. of messing it up. Sure. But uh, as for climate change, we're not responsible. Yep can put it in any other way that's i mean yeah it's uh, it's insanity that, that what goes on here on this planet in terms of uh, that discussion but let's let's not go there because we have more interesting <laughs> things to, to talk about we've we've covered this yeah. in the past with other guests as well uh, in terms of the whole global warming scam as it were in that sense but um mm -hmm. what what about if we talk about things like earthquakes then if is the relationship between uh, the electric universe and 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 uh, these kinds of phenomena on Earth as well, like a kind of a, another discharge, if you will, of 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 energy that is taking place. What's your take on this? Or earthquakes and potential sun or galaxy connections? Then, well, yes, yes. Um, I have uh, likened uh, earthquakes to the underground sound of um, thunder. In other words, the uh, shaking of the earth is the same as the kind of rattling that you get from uh, uh, thunder. And they're both the thunder and uh, the earthquake is due to um, electrical discharge within the earth. Um, it, w you can actually see how the idea can be um, uh, presented when you look at comets, comets do a strange thing. They occasionally shatter. They break up into pieces. And this is quite a puzzle because the energy required to uh, make the parts move apart as quickly as they do after the uh, disruption can't be explained uh, just by uh, any simple transfer of heat energy from the surface to the interior and so on. Mm. They, ex they explode, in effect. It's the same kind of thing that happens occasionally uh, as an electronic engineer. If a capacitor breaks down on you and the stress on it is uh, high enough, it will explode mm. uh, quite dangerously. Now, it seems to me, and in fact the electric model of gravity, uh, suggests that every ponderable body, every moon, comet, planet, uh, is built rather than like an electret. <clears throat> An electrode is something which um, has a sustained electrostatic charge on it. It's because the charge is distributed, if you like, or the electric field is internal to the object. And uh, every planet uh, acts like an electrode. So there is, there is an electrical stress inside the body. Now, if in the activity of discharging to space in the form of storms and... Uh, sprites and all of that kind of thing and the uh, auroral storms uh, you have a sufficient transfer of energy or electrical charge from the surface of uh, the earth then you increase the electric stress within the earth and at some point it will break down just like the earth's atmosphere does and in and you will end up with a lightning bolt only instead of in the atmosphere this one is underground because it's been pointed out that the uh, energy of um I think the Chilean earthquake was uh, something like 10,000 Hiroshima's. Yeah. And the energy has always been put down to uh, pent-up stress in the rocks. But uh, there is uh, a scientist, I'm um, um, just trying to think of his name, Freundlich, is it? Uh, mm -hmm. Who's been having trouble getting his work published. He's pointed out that if you stress a rock, it acts like a, a semiconductor. Mm. 